Good evening. Is it evening? It's 4.30. It's almost evening. Uh, day four of the 30-day challenge. And today is recognizing your calling. And, you know, when God gave me recognize your calling, I always thought recognize meant to look or see, to, to, to notice, to look or see. Well, today God is amazing because uh, this morning he had me go, good morning, Maria. Hey, I saw you do your live and I thought it was fabulous. Um, so this morning he had me go and dig up the word recognize. And so that's all I really want to focus on. Hey, Alicia, how are you? I'm so excited you guys are joining in. Like, share, well, I don't know if you can share, actually. Communicate. Good evening, Selena. Um, so he had me go to dig up the word recognize, and I was blown away. I did a little post on it in uh, written form and gave you the definition, and I promised that I would come on and do a live letter because there is no way that I could type fast enough to give you like all the information that God was giving me. Um, hi, Selena. So, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let me share with you some of the revelations. You guys chime in, like, uh, do whatever is necessary, but let me know, uh, if you get revelations, what you, what you thought about this. And you know, I really want you to think about this from God's perspective. So imagining that God was sharing these things with us, which actually this definition I got this definition is out of the Webster Dictionary. You like this? I had it in font 11. <laughs> and then I made it bigger in font 16 so I could read it easier. Um, this is out of the Webster Dictionary. But I am telling you, this is from God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the creator of you and your amazing plan. So listen to him like speaking to you. And I want you to think from his perspective. But let's begin first with the origin. So the origin is uh, late Middle English. It is from an old French word called reconis, or the stem from reconister. Latin, recognoscere, re, but here's the profound thing. The origin of recognize means to know again, to recall to mind, or to learn again. Learn again. Oh my gosh. And so how profound is this, that on day four of our challenge, it is recognize your calling. So let me just put this back in here. To know again your calling, to recall to mind your calling, to learn again your calling. Hey, Sarah. And so how profound is that, that that is where the word recognize comes from. And so can you imagine the Lord saying today, I want you to know again your calling. I want you to recall to mind the calling that I have created for you. I want you to learn again because you have forgotten what calling I have placed in your life. Things have gotten in your way and uh, the world has gotten muddled and you've become overwhelmed and you've gotten off track and I want you to come back. This is the Lord talking to you. I want you to come back and I want you to know again, to recall to your mind and to learn again your calling. That's what we did today and if you haven't done it, well lucky you, you get to do it. And so you get to go and spend time in the presence of the Lord recalling, remembering, and relearning your calling, the one that God gave you. So let's go on to recognize. So I think this is so um, awesome because in the Webster Dictionary it says that to recognize is your identity. It says identity. I'm not making any of this stuff up, okay? When I look up, that's kind of like when I'll give you my opinion and my insight and my revelations. Uh, let's see who else joined. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good, good evening, Maribel. And Sunchild, hey guys, give me thumbs up, uh, conversations, anything that you think is important that, that I'm sharing with you. But um, right now, if you're just tuning in, all I am sharing is the Webster Dictionary definition of recognize, because today is day four, recognize your calling. And how powerful when we think of this word from God's perspective. And so the first definition of uh, recognize is identity. Someone or something having encountered them before to know again. Oh my gosh. So here's what comes to mind. Here we are in Jeremiah 1 where we found our identity in Christ in day one. And God tells Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. 
He had an encounter with us. He created us and formed us, and he gave us all the specific giftings and talents for our calling. And today, on day four, he's saying, I want you to go and recognize your calling. I want you to go and remember and have an encounter with me again, because I've had an encounter, it says right here, from having encountered them before. Identity from having encountered them before. God says, come and recognize, relearn, and re um, call to mind the calling that I've given you from the encounter that I had before with you. Know again, not, not uh, learn again here, but know again. Know again deep in your heart, deep in your mind, what the calling was that I gave you. Alicia, amen. We need to know and believe who we are in order to recognize and accept our calling God has for us. Amen. Isn't that the truth? And so we have to know our identity, and we have to go in and recognize, relearn, and re-know. Uh, definition two, identity from knowledge or appearance or character. That's when we recognize. You know how we recognize our calling? When we recognize the knowledge that we learn from God, when we learn his appearance of him in us and us in him, when we recognize that we, um, that we resemble God, that God created us in his image. And when we can literally look at ourselves, like I'm looking at myself right now on camera, when you can look in the mirror and you can look at yourself and you can recognize Jesus in you, recognize him in um, your passion, your love for people, your uh, 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 knowledge of the truth. Whenever you can find uh, the, the truth in darkness, when darkness has uh, covered you and the enemy's been lying to you and you can recognize truth in it and destroy darkness, hello, that is the appearance, appearance of God. And then character. So your identity from knowing character. Again, knowing the character of Christ. That is how we recognize our calling. Identifying from knowledge, appearance, or character. And then so some of the synonyms. Place, no, I love this one. Put a name to remember. That's, that's right here. This isn't me making it up. See, it's that blue underline. Look at that. It says, identity is to put a name to remember. Hello, Alicia, let me remind you who you are in Christ. Sun child, let me remind you who you are and who I've created you to be. Sarah, let me remind you, put a name to remember who you are. Hey, LaWanda, how are you? Oh, shoot. Here we go. Let's go back. There we go. Hey, LaWanda. So to remind us by putting a name to us. So you get into the presence of the Lord today to recognize, to recall, and to remember who you are and whose you are. And that's when you can start remembering the gifts and the talents that he's put in with you. And you're not doing it on a, on a self-righteous way or a self, um, you know, declaration and proclamation. You're saying, God gave me this. This is who God made me. This is who God created me to do. This is the name that caught God called me to remember. These are the things that he placed in me. The next one is um, to recall, recollect, Call to mind, know by sight. So when you see your gift, you know it. The next definition in the Webster Dictionary says to acknowledge the existence, validity, or legality of. Hmm. Let's just think about that one for a minute. So here's God. He's watching us right now. He's watching us communicate on this this very video, this very conversation, I'm speaking with you and you're communicating with me. And God is watching us. <clears throat> and he's watching you when you go in time with him. And he sees your heart and he sees it surrendered. And he sees that you are desperate to know him better. And he is watching you. And you're going after seeking the acknowledgement of the existence of the fact that he gave you a calling. The fact that he gave you an existence of gifts and talents to achieve this mission that he's called you to. It says the acknowledgement of existence and validity. Validity. Who's going to validate you? Is the world going to validate your calling? Is the world going to validate your gifts and talents? Because I'll tell you what, uh, we'll get later into that in chapter 19. Follow God and do not follow man. But if you want to acknowledge your gifts and talents, 
Go to the source who gave them to you. That's where the existence was created and that's where the validity should come from. Because you know what? If we want to go and learn and recognize our gifts and callings from man, then guess what? They can steal them from us as well. The moment that somebody says we're not capable of something or we're not good at something or we're not doing a good job, and you know what? It could be a reflection from them that they're speaking on to us, and so we take in their insecurity. We take in their deficits. We take in their lack of faith and their lack of training. But no, we, we have committed 30 days in the presence of the Lord to go seek after him and to find and to recognize. And so if you're just tuned in, this is amazing because the word originated, the word recognize originated from to know again, to recall to mind, and to learn again. And so that's what today is all about. Sinjal, put a name to remember each hair on your head. He named and he calls us out to remember the alphabet that he created, the ABCs of self-love, and we could create a song to remember ourselves. I love that, son child. Think about it. Today in recognize, I want you to know what recognize means. So anytime that you take your eyes, because remember, if, if you're just tuning in, when I wrote this book and, you know, over the last seven times, I've always thought of recognize as the simple words as to look, see, or find. But the truth is it's so much deeper than that. Recognizing our calling is to go into the presence of the Lord and to ask him, I want to know again who you created me to be. I want to recall to mind my calling, the gifts and talents, and I want to learn again. Everything I've forgotten, everything I've misplaced, everything that I've stopped believing in, every talent and gift I've stopped using and that I've put on a shelf, I want to recall again. I want to learn again, Father. I want you to, to show me, to teach me, and I am going to um, acknowledge the existence of them, acknowledge the existence of who gave them to me. I'm going to acknowledge the validity of them because the creator of the heavens and earth gave them to me. He told me that they're there. He told me the purpose. And then I love this because the last part of the third definition is the legality of it. Hello. You want to go to a court of law and you want to defend yourself and you want to know the legality of it? will get the legality of it from the heavens and earth and that you know for a fact that you know that you know that you know that you know your gifts and talents because you had a dialogue, you had a communion, you had a conversation with your heavenly father and he spoke to you and you journaled it down and he told you these are the gifts and talents that I have given you Tamara, that I've given you, Lawanda, that I've been giving you, Maribel, that I've been giving you, Alicia, I've been giving you, you, put your name in there and receive the gifts and talents that he has given you. Let's move on. The next definition. Okay, so these are some synonyms, continued syn synonyms. <clears throat> Acknowledgement. Remember, this is God talking to you. You ready? So God talking to you. Go into the presence of the Lord to know again everything I've forgotten or misplaced or stopped believing in or stopped using. I am going to acknowledge the existence of them and acknowledge you, Lord. He is the one who gave it to me. Oh my God, the legality is the court of heaven, so I can use this as my... That's right, girl, it is the court of heaven. And anytime you need to defend yourself, you already have the best defense you have, the court of heaven. So these are synonyms to recognize <clears throat> remember God, I want God to speak to you right now. I want you to think that God is telling you this, okay? Like you're in the presence of the Lord and you want to recognize your calling. So he says to you, I want you to acknowledge them. These are synonyms in the dictionary. These aren't me making this up. This isn't me writing. It says, acknowledge them, accept them, admit them, concede them, allow them, grant them, confess them, own them, realize them. Be aware of them, be conscious of them, to perceive them, to discern them, to appreciate them, to understand them, to apprehend them. Woo! Do you know what apprehend means? Apprehend, to cease, to take ownership of, to, to apprehend them, to snatch them and put them in your hand, to see them, to be cognizant of them, to take on board, to take on board. So you're getting ready for your travels, right? The train is about to depart and you're headed to your journey, your destination, your amazing calling, and you better grab your gifts and talents. You better grab your, the recognition of your calling. You better take on board 
the recognition that you know your gifts and talents and you know your calling. Take on board for your journey because if you forgot, if you've put them aside, if you've sat the bags down, you get on the train and you take off, guess what? You didn't put them on board and take on board means to recognize your calling. So you better pack your bags, girls and boys. You better pack your bags with your calling, the conversation you have with your Heavenly Father today. So it says... Um, a, a fi officially approve. Remember, this is the Lord talking to you. This is the Lord telling you. This is what I want you to do when you come to me today to recognize the gifts and talents that I have to tell you about. To officially approve them. To certify them. Boom. I'm going to put my stamp of approval on them. To certify them. To accredit them. To endorse them. To sanctify them. To put... Oh, I love this too. Woohoo is right, Selena. To put the seal of approval on. Hello. God is saying, come to me, child. Come to me, daughter. Come to me, son. And come and learn to recognize your calling because I'm going to put the seal of approval on them for you so that you no longer have to forget them. You no longer leave them on the side of the car, the plane, the train. When we're headed for the destiny, you will have your luggage on board with you. Take them on board. It says to um, to acknowledge, to validate, to accept as valid, to ratify. Ooh, to ratify. You think that if we recognize our gifts and our talents and our calling, do you think that he can ratify us? I trust that he can ratify us. That when we take ownership, when we take all these words, I can't repeat them, but when we take all these words that God just gave us in the definition, the Webster Def Dictionary, do you think that that would ratify us? Because I think God wants radical transformation in us. I think that um, the death on the cross, I think his whole sacrifice for us, the greatest gift he ever had was his son that he gave to us and his life for us. Do you think that was radical for God to do that for us? Because if you say yes to that, then I think that God wants you to say yes to being radical for him, to ratify in the recognition of accepting the gifts and talents that he has placed in you, the calling. And we'll get to the second part of the challenge today, which is learning to use them for God. Because your gifts and talents are one thing, but until we learn to use them to glorify God, that's when they step into the calling. That's kind of what ratifying is. So I give you the talent of, say, sales and marketing. So me for marketing. God gave me the gift of marketing. I've been in sales and marketing all my life. And you know what? As soon as I moved out of the business world and into the world of ministry, he has ratified those gifts in the business world and he has ratified them and he has multiplied them for his glory, for his honor that I can teach and educate and inspire and encourage and empower people through the word of God. That's radicalizing. That's radicalizing my gifting into a calling to uphold and to support. Um, and then, let's see, is that the last one? Am I done, like, going on and on? Nope, here's a couple more. Here's a couple more. So, a couple more was to show appreciation of. So, to recognize, okay, so let's, let's think of this now as you saying, thank you, Papa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father God, for loving me so much. So, now I want you to look in this conversation to your Heavenly Father when He just looked at you and told you all those things about acknowledging and accepting and admitting, conceding, allowing, understanding, apprehending. Now you say to your father, this is still in the dictionary. This isn't me writing. This is the next section. This is um, where he says this, where we say this to him. Father, I want to pay tribute to you. I want to show appreciation of what you've done for me, not in the sacrifice, but in the gifts and the talents and the calling. I want to show appreciation to you, to give recognition to you, Father. I, that's what glorifying God is, is giving recognition to the Heavenly Father who birthed you, who gave you a plan, gave you gifts and talents, and now He wants you to recognize them. Father, we want to show gratitude. We want to be grateful for. Father, we want to acclaim them. We want to commend them. We want to salute. Oh, let me go right. Father, we want to salute you. We want to salute, salute you. That means recognize. Recognize means salute. To salute our Heavenly Father. To applaud. Oh, 
Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for the gifts and talents you just showed me. To take one's hat off. I can't take it off. My hair's a mess. <laughs> to take one hat off. To salute. To reward. Oh, to honor. There it is. The word honor is right in here. Did you know that when you recognize your calling, you're honoring your Father? You're paying gratitude and appreciation to Him. You're acclaiming and commending. And the last one is that you are, it's not the last one, sorry, to pay homage to. Oh my gosh, to pay homage to. The last one, the last three, says officially regard a qualification. Uh-oh, get ready for this. This is still in the dictionary. Okay, get ready for this one. It says to officially regard a qualification as valid, proper ID. I want to do everything I can right now from not crying. I want to read that one again. To officially regard a qualification as valid, proper ID. Did you know that when we recognize our calling from God, that we are officially regarding it as a qualification? Hey, Jennifer, that you got to go back and, and um, catch all that we've been talking about because it's pretty stinking amazing. That when we recognize our calling, hey, Sandy, oh, good, Sandy's on too. How exciting. You guys got to go make sure you listen to the whole thing again. So when we recognize our calling from God, when we spend day four in the presence of the Lord and we truly seek after the recognition of our calling, it says that we officially regard it as a qualification, that we become qualified, that we become qualified. Why? Because our qualifier qualified us. It was our heavenly fathers. It was the courts of heaven that have officially qualified us and as proper, valid ID. Ooh, we are ID'd as proper and valid in our qualifications when we recognize our calling from God and not from human beings, but from God. When God says, this is what I have created you for and these are the things I have given you and this is what I want you to start using them for, that is proper, valid ID. And then the, la the second to last one, grant diplomatic recognition to. A person presiding at a meeting or debate, call out someone to speak. So that's just recognizing, like identity, back to identity and identifying them. So uh, I'm going to end this with this. Uh, I started with it and I'm going to end with it. So eighth time I've done this and for every other time and including when I wrote when I wrote this book and every time I've spoke it and said it, I've said, recognize your calling. I'm sure you even have me somewhere on tape um, talking about recognize your calling. And I always thought it meant to look or see. And I think that's the simple version of recognize, to look or see. Because recognize, oh my God, I just had a revelation. This is what Amazing Life Ministries is all about. We have three goals at Amazing Life Ministry to help people recognize, embrace, and live out their amazing plan. And I have always talked about recognizing as being the simple looking or seeing. So like you recognize, you look for it, you see it, you, you recognize it. Uh-uh, ladies and gentlemen, recognize is a very deep spiritual encounter with the Heavenly Fathers. And it comes the origin of recognize. So today God took me in my studies to go dig the word recognize. He said, I want you to go study recognize because this is what you're going to be teaching. And the word recognize comes from... Um, it's, it's late Middle English from Old French word called reckonness. Or it stems from a word reckonestir from Latin reckonestir. I'm sorry, I'm not saying it very good. Um, but anyway, the point is that they come from a word that is known as this. Recognize means to know again. Know again your calling. To recall to mind the calling that God has given you. And to learn again the calling that God has given to you. And so that's the origin of the word recognize. I pray that if you've already taken your challenge today, um, that God speaks to you somewhere. You're watching TV, you're at a basketball game with the kids, whatever it is, whatever you're doing for the rest of the night tonight. 
I pray God continues to speak with you. And if he says something, I want you to do this. I want you to run back, grab your journal, and I want you to stick it in there because we want to keep meditating on these things. Just like, just like me. God told me today, I want you to talk, learn about recognizing. So that's what I did. And woo, an outpouring of new wisdom and knowledge and discernment and teaching and guidance. And, um, you know, my whole goal, of course, is to help people. He told me, Tamara, write these things down that I've taught you so you can teach other people. But look at what he's teaching me. As I'm teaching you, he's teaching me. He's taking me to a whole nother layer, a whole nother level, a whole nother level of learning, of being aware. It begins in the presence of the Lord and being obedient. Write it down. If he says, go learn, recognize, and you're like, recognize, what could possibly be um, in the word recognize to learn? Since I already know it, God, it's called learn to look or to see. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I got so much more to teach you about the word recognize. And for those of you that haven't done your uh, challenge today, well, here I am. I am your cheerleader. I'm supporting you. I'm, I, I'm cheering you on. I want you to do this. I don't want you to do this for me. Okay, this isn't for me. Don't do this for me. Okay, I was obedient to the Heavenly Father when he said, write down all the things that I have taught you, Tamara, so you can teach them to other people. I've already been obedient. I had an audience of one to do this for. So now I'm just moving it forward. I'm pushing it forward. You know, I, 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 what it was, it take on board. I've taken on all these things on board and now I'm pushing them forward to you. And so I want to encourage you to do the 30 day challenge. Do the 30 day challenge. Do it every day. Find 30 minutes, prioritize it in your day to get in the word, get in worship, get in fellowship, get in communion, get in dialogue with your heavenly father if you get stuck. If you get busy, if you forget a day, do not let that derail you and sidetrack you. You are going to miss out. This is for you. It's not for me. It's for you. It's not for me. I'm already having my encounters with the Lord. I'm going to go in and dig every day. I want you. God asked me to teach you. And so I want to teach you. I want to encourage you. I want to push you. I want to motivate you. I want to correct you. Remember first, uh, second Timothy 16 to 16. 316, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 316, that every word in the Bible is for correcting, teaching, rebuking, and training. That's what we're doing. We're going to go dig into the Bible, into the book, and we are going to um, unpack, unpack, unpack every single word that God says to us. We don't have to have like these um, big old profound conversations. Now we might, and we can, and that's awesome, but he can give you one word like recognize. And if you actually go and ask for his spirit to lead you on the word recognize, look what he just downloaded for me today. And so if you get a word, oh, one word, one vision, if he gives you one gift, one talent, one calling, uh, you don't need more. You need one. And then I want you to take it to the next level. So um, somebody ha got stuck on this today. And so I want to encourage you real quick before I take off. Um, let me go. Let me find day four. So the first part of the challenge was to um, write down your gifts, your talents. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm not sure what part she got stuck on because... There is this part, which are the questions, okay? Those are important questions. The reason why I put questions in there for you is I was in sales and marketing, so let me try to explain it to you this way. When you are a great salesperson and when you are going in to close a sale, key number one, there are 10 keys to negotiation. And key number one, the number one key in negotiation is Know your baseline in which you will begin to negotiate. And so I really believe that I put questions in to um, preparation before you got started as well as today because I want you to know in which the baseline is. Where is the baseline in which you will get started? And so these questions are, can you believe that God has a plan for you? Describe what you think they are already. Identify circumstances in your life that have prevented it. What do you desire to accomplish in your life for God? What amazing plans have you allowed the enemy? I need you to know at what baseline will you begin negotiations at. Because if you don't even know where your baseline is, if you don't know your, your baseline before you get ready to negotiate, 
you just kind of go wherever the wind goes. You do and say and be anything that anybody wants you to be. And that, that is not the way that we recognize our calling. So that's those first questions. Now the second part, or the third part if you want to see it, was to list out all your qualities, talents, giftings, and passions. And then the second part was how to use them for God. So this first part is where you just want to pray and you just want God to, to download every gift and every talent and every quality that you have. You know what a quality is? A quality is like, um, is, um, I care deeply for people. Because, you know, caring deeply, like, you know, you have empathy. You have empathy uh, for people, that, that characteristic, that quality of empathy. That's a mission. That is a mission. That is a mission. That is a, that is a, uh, a ministry. You can take that and apply it to so many places where you can walk out into a calling. This doesn't mean you have to give up your day job. I, I did ministry without even realizing when I was in sales and marketing for 20 years and I, I always spoke about God. I always transformed them because for me in sales, when you go out and you meet a client, people don't buy from you because they like your product. They buy from you because they are drawn to you. They like you. They trust you. And so in order for people to know who I was, I had to share my story. I had to share my life. And at that time, I mean, my life was all about, uh, you know, the, the recognition of learning God and, and honestly through my divorce and through my marriage and through my adoption and through my transformation, it was all about this amazing kind of hardship in my life, but that God was real in it and that God was carrying me and that even though there was um, tragedy and hurt and pain, they didn't see that. They saw the joy of the Lord in me. They saw the joy of the Lord in me and they saw that I had faith and I had trust in the Lord. And so I was able to share those things with them. That's that I was living, not my calling, but I was certainly moving towards it. God was preparing me for such a time as this. And then what I want you to do is after you write down all your qualities, talents, giftings, and passions, then passion, think about it. Are you passionate about the homeless? Are you passionate about children? Are you passionate about single mothers? Are you passionate about broken hearts? Are you passionate about sewing? Are you passionate about football? Are you passionate about hockey? I mean, it doesn't matter. God formed you perfectly. So identify like all your passions because those you're going to take and we're going to mold you into a ministry. And then on the other side, I want you to stop and I want you to put your hand on all your qualities, talents, giftings, and passions. And then I want you to pray. And I said, Father, I'm ready. I'm ready to take my luggage on board. I'm ready to put it on board, Father. And so tell me, what train am I getting on, Father? Which train am I getting on? Where's my destination? Where am I headed? And just let him, um, let him share with you how you can use it. If you're a good cook, can you use it to cook for the homeless? Can you use it to cook for new families that come into the church? Hi, Lisa. Can you use it to... Um, cook for sick people in the hospitals? Can you use it to bake goodies for seniors in the senior centers? Um, if your gifting is, um, well, my mother. My mother has an amazing talent for crocheting, something I certainly didn't get. And I, I don't, I'm serious. No matter how hard I want to work at trying to develop that, that is not my gifting. <laughs> I laugh because I am so not good at it. I don't have the patience for it. I don't have the fine motor skills to um, sit and do that. My mom has made probably over a thousand Afghans in her lifetime, and she makes them with love and kindness and generosity, and she gives them to every new baby that comes along. My friend, her, my son, my brother's friends, just friends in the, in the community, anybody that she hears of, she blesses. That is honestly her ministry. Gives them comfort and warmth. And imagine if you have that skill of sewing or crocheting or knitting, and you do that for um, sick babies, drug babies, single mothers, um, you know, babies in the hospital. Can you imagine like the prayers that you could weave in to the knitting? And, and just thinking kind of like God knitting you in your mother's womb, how God knitted that child, that sick child in their mother's womb, and then you are praying as you are knitting. So you and Jesus are knitting together. Can you, I mean, seriously, think about the power of that. 
that you are knitting prayers into the to the to the blanket as God has knitted this child into the womb of a mother. Can you imagine the impact that you would have on a child? Now, this might not be a ministry that you might think of, like where you go out and speak and teach and you have a church and a building, but that isn't, that isn't God's calling. God's calling is to be the church, to be the church, not to be in a church. It's to be the church, and we can be the church any and everywhere we are. And so um, I, hope that, I hope that helps. Um, you, if you're struggling today on day four, like you found your gifts and talents, but you don't know how to identify how to use them for God. And then I'm going to close out. If you saw, we're having an event tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. If you want to come meet me, hang out, share with me. Hey, Ron, nice to see you. You're first man of the day to, to clock in today, but eight o'clock, we're going to be at, uh, the daily brew. It's at Van Buren and Lincoln in the city of Riverside. And I'm going to be there from 8 to 10. Love to see you. Pray with you. If you get stuck, bring it. Okay? Bring your, bring your book. Bring your Bible. Bring your journal. Bring every piece of information you have, you want, you want to discuss, you want to share. And um, if you need help with, we can get you unstuck. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for your journey. We want to, we want to pray together. So um, we'll see you tomorrow morning. If you have trouble, you don't remember where it is, I put an event in this group page for you. But it's at the cross streets of Lincoln and Van Buren in Riverside, right off the 91 freeway in Van Buren in the Albertsons parking lot. I'm going to get there and save you a seat, so please try to let me know that you're coming. Blessed to be a part of this challenge. Ron, it is so awesome to have you. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to encourage you guys to, uh, I love that you're typing. I love, Ron, you shared a picture of yourself today. Um, I want you to also be encouraged to try to, get out and get um, out of your comfort zone. I, I'm not pushing you, okay? I want God to. But if God, like, is nudging your heart, remember the day that God, like, pulled you out of your seat to go forward to receive Christ? If he's, like, pulling you out of your seat and saying, share with them, share with them, tell them, tell them, tell them, ask them, even if you're afraid, even if you're, um, you know, even if you... Even if, if it's a problem, I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. So um, do it. Share with us. Ask us. Communicate. Participate. So exciting because every day I think this challenge grows by another four to five people. And I've got exciting news. Today I got two, one, two. I got two emails. I got one email from somebody I met who is going to do this with a group of her women and then I got a, a text from another pastor who is in February going to be doing it for all of her women in her church and her group. How exciting is that? That momentum is growing. And for me, that's just a sign that God is in control. That when we are obedient to do what God has asked us to do, and we step out in obedience, that God is going to go and do amazing things. Um, beyond our wildest dreams. And so you are all witnessing like God leading this journey through me, for me, and now out into the community. All of you, all of the last 500 people that have done this, all of the future hundreds and thousands of people that are going to do this, you're going to get to witness God's power in my life, in this ministry, through this book. And guess what? The same power that God is anointing in me and that is leading me through this He's got it for you too. You do this challenge and I guarantee you that you're going to step into territory you never thought you would ever step into. Uh, he's going to open your eyes to um, recognize Ron and all you latecomers. You've got to go back and um, listen to the whole video. I basically gave um, just a revelation of what God told me on one word. And the one word is recognize. Today is recognize your calling. He's got so much to speak to us about recognizing our calling. Go be blessed and I will see you tomorrow.